There is no bad weather, just inappropriate clothing. <laughs> That's interesting. Grass growing on top. I love countryside. Just these mass, like, just towering over everything. I know. Oh, look at that. Wow. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at a interesting video. It's an English country video, countryside. Mm -hmm. Something Scenery. that's been highly recommended. Yeah. Uh, but first we have to address a rumor or a correction or something? I don't know. A lot of guys in the last video I noticed uh, were calling out our background <laughs> here for saying uh, it wasn't spelled correctly and then upon further investigation it is not. It is not. It is spelled incorrectly as you guys know. I did not catch that. Nope. This was a gift from my brother. I think he got it on Amazon. So we can blame him. We can blame Amazon. <laughs> oh. Amazon screwed up or whoever made this <laughs> and spelled it wrong and I'm actually surprised no one caught it. Yeah. Obviously, you guys did. But anyway, guys, sorry about that. Thanks it's for that. Still gonna be our background for now, just because this is a temporary studio. Looking forward to sharing uh, the new studio with you guys here soon. Yes, it's hopefully. Gonna be a lot of work, but I think it'll be fun and mm -hmm. worth it. Anyway, guys, before we get in this video, please like, share, subscribe, turn the notification bell if you like this type of content, and go check us out on Discord for and send us future recommendations there. Also, let us know if you guys are liking us checking out the scenery mm -hmm. of the UK because we really do, and we've really been enjoying it, and uh, we're semi open to coming back next summer. So we'll just have to see how it works. Mm -hmm. Now, do you want to say what the actual name of the video is that we're watching today? Yeah, sorry for the long intro. <laughs> it is North England's Lake District in Durham. Northern England is a lush land steeped in a rich brew of history, culture, and nature. Traveling here, I'm struck by how man and nature seem to coexist in harmony and how richly rewarding a visit can be. We'll hike along an ancient Roman wall, play a little cricket, and be dazzled in a Norman cathedral. We'll meet the locals and their beloved dogs and sheep everywhere. <laughs> Donning hard hats. Oh, the, the, the sheep everywhere. Donning hard hats. We'll tour an old slate mine, and of course, we'll enjoy the countless hikes, admiring lakes, oh, that's pretty. discovering waterfalls, and conquering stony summits. Wow. Great Britain is dominated by England. In the north of England, we'll visit Durham, Hadrian's Wall and the Cumbrian Lake District. Oh. Yeah, see, that's like, there's just so much in the whole world to see, but like, I feel like you could easily spend six months in England. Oh, for just sure. Just going all the, just not even just for the history, just we the We really didn't explore the north of England. We didn't explore. Because we were in Scotland. We were there for so, so little time, we didn't really explore hardly anything, but there's actually a cave that I want to go to in the Yorkshire Dales. Oh, really? Yeah. I hadn't heard of that one. So that's like somewhat on my bucket list now. <laughs> if we go back, I really want to go back to, to York. Cave. That's all I forget list. what it's called. Anyway, yeah, I, I really want to go back and hopefully spend more time Mm. And really like explore all the new places. Explore we didn't the small see. explore the places yeah, explore the places we didn't see. We'll focus on the less touristy northern lakes, home basing in Keswick. The Cumbrian Lake District, just 30 miles by 30 miles, is England's green, pristine mountain playground. While not impressive in sheer height, England's highest peak is just 3,200 feet. It's long been a powerful magnet for nature lovers. The charm of this area is, in part, the range of experiences it provides. I like all the rolling hills. Mm -hmm. Stumble upon a surprise lake view, then climb over a rock fence to look into the eyes of a ragamuffin sheep. <laughs> Find the perfect farmhouse B and B. Then enjoy this pack horse bridge. And for a memorable lunch, summit your own private peak for a picnic. Oh, that's cool. This region gives even tender feet a chance to feel rugged and outdoorsy. That's Here great. in the Lake so District, great. William Wordsworth's poems still ripple on the ponds. This is a land where nature rules and humanity keeps a low profile. For two centuries, this region has inspired visitors to relax, recharge, get some exercise, and maybe even write a poem. Hmm. The Lake District is green for good reason. It rains a lot. Experienced English That's hikers English. dress smart and don't let blustery weather keep them in. It can be rainy one moment and then suddenly gorgeous. Oh wow, As that's a great yeah. picture. I was like, again, what I want to say, huge shout out. Like, for the people that do these type of videos, I'm learning from the Iceland videos, there's so much more work that goes into these types. <laughs> yeah, the day and night between like the sun and the clouds, like clouds can like kill your shots. Mm -hmm. Like you can have the same thing and if it's like super cloudy, no sun, it won't even look, it just does not look the same. Nope, not at all. It can be rainy one moment and then suddenly gorgeous. I love the islands and As lakes. locals love to say, why. there is no bad weather, just inappropriate clothing. <laughs> 
That's a good saying. The town of Keswick is your best home base for exploring the northern lakes, which I prefer to the more commercial southern part of the region. That's good to know. Keswick was originally a mining center, but the slate and lead industries eventually gave way to nature-loving tourists. Huh. And in the 19th century, Keswick became a resort. Its fine old buildings recall those romantic era days when big city folks first learned about communing with nature. Today, the town is well stocked with hiking gear shops, in pubs. <laughs> of course. Of course. The Lake District is popular with English holiday makers who prefer to bring their beloved dogs with them on vacation. Keswick Town Square can look like a king. Oh my god, that's a fat dog. <laughs> that's a fat dog. Look at that face. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, I'm somewhat disappointed that we chose Snowdonia over Lake District, mm. but again, also because we didn't do Snowdonia justice. We didn't get to explore how I wanted that's or how true. we should have. Hopefully, this is the future. Keswick Town Square can look like a canine convention. And in local pubs, dogs are more than welcome. Oh, that's cool. Dog and gun. And we picked up a tip at the pub. A sheepdog trial and hound show is on today, and it's just down the valley. And the main event, as explained to us by a local aficionado, is the shepherd and his dog bringing in the sheep as quickly as possible. Oh, that's cool. The shepherd goes yeah. out. He's given a given position where he stands at the post and he has to direct his dog out on the right or the left to the material. Dogs, you can work them half a mile away. Wow. They'll pick the sound up and they will hear you. And they can work them half a mile away, collecting sheep, putting them together, bring them into a flock. That's Bring cool. them as near in a straight line as possible down the course, through the hurdles there, back to the pen, hopefully nice pen, straight in, no breaks, and the applause. That's a lot more involved than I thought it would be. That's, that's such a skill. I, like, how many hours have to go into training a dog like that? I, I honestly yeah. don't know, but <laughs> I kind of like that this is like still a sport, like a spectator's yeah. convention or something like you can kind of show off. Well, it's, it's kind of like at rodeos, they kind of show different skills. Of I know, what that's you do what I'm saying. It's, it's, stuff, so I don't it's kind know of similar to that, but if, less extreme maybe. I'm not sure if the UK has like the rodeos that we, we have, like the. The bull, the bull, I've always wondered that. Like the bull... Bull busting? Bull, yeah, the bull busting and... Bronco busting. Bronco busting and like all like... Running Roping. Around, chasing around the barrels and the figure eights and all mm -hmm. that. I don't know. I'd be interested to know, guys, if you guys have uh, similar rodeos or if this is like your version of the rodeo. Right. Working aboard a collie, it's like marriage. It's got to click. You must have confidence in one another. The dog will have confidence in you if you've got confidence in him. It's as beautiful as that. And it's lovely to work with. Keswick has plenty of good B&Bs. We're staying at Haukeld, which has the polished feel of a boutique hotel, but offers all the warmth and friendliness of a B&B. Hmm. Its contemporary rooms are tastefully furnished in native woods and slate. Its breakfast is first class. I'm getting the traditional Cumbrian fry, complete with local sausage. Mm -hmm. And the lounge offers a cozy and enjoyable place to relax and prepare for your day's activities. Well, Good. just to elaborate, I'm not, I'm not trying to always bring it up, but Iceland, I noticed, they served a like traditional British breakfast. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. For their um, continental. They had like the mushrooms and the tomatoes and the... Beans on toast? Kind of uh, thing. They had toast and beans. I don't know if they had as much the banger side. I think they had uh. some kind of meat or whatever, but I just thought that was interesting to see. Huh. Good B&B &B hosts loan maps and offer plenty of hiking advice. Just down the street cool. is Keswick's yeah. Petite Marina where we're combining a short cruise with my favorite Lake District hike oh, that's a up cool a dramatic road. nearby ridge. Derwentwater is one of Cumbria's most photographed and popular lakes. Boats circle the lake, picking up and dropping off walkers at peaceful landings all along the way. Oh, that's cool. From the dock, a trail leads up along a ridge called Cat Bells. The steep climb both burns off that Cumbrian fried <laughs> breakfast <laughs> and offers some commanding views. How steep views. that is. Vigorous hikes like this are one of many reasons the Lake District is such a hit with English holiday goers. Mm. This little adventure takes just a couple of hours and it rewards anyone who tackles it with That's a trip awesome. highlight. Yeah. Get out and make these experiences happen. For the rest of your life, you'll like remember, in this case, scaling Cat Bells with its thrilling King of the Mountain climax.
What do you think of um, Arthur's seat? Was it, was it taller? Uh, I think it was, but it had kind of a similar view because it was like the taller point so you could see out. Mm -hmm. There was less like surrounding close mountains on Arthur's seat. And the summit After point was descent, a lot smaller. After our descent, we catch the oh, boat at the next landing it was and very finish crowded. our relaxing like cruise <laughs> around Derwent Water. The Pheasant Inn is a Keswick favorite, mm -hmm. and David and Val, who run our B&B, are joining us for dinner. As anywhere in Britain, a good pub comes with charming conviviality. Kids are welcome. And once again, in Cumbrian pubs, man's best friend is perfectly welcome too. The menu offers Lake District pub classics. David's having trout, and I'm going for the rump of lamb. My image of pub grub in the old days was pretty bad. No, pubs are taking a lot more um, interest in food now. They're not just the, um, the drinking destinations. They're mm -hmm. having to sell food um, in order to attract people in. And they're smoke-free. That, that's been a great improvement over the recent years since the smoking ban came in, and uh, uh, it's much more pleasant to eat now. There is a smoking ban? I mean, it's very uh, 10 years old. Oh. So I'm not surprised. I mean, yeah, think of over here, like most places don't let you smoke anymore. Yeah, inside, that's true. It used to be, I don't quite remember it. I do remember when we went out to eat as like a family with my grandma and stuff. My parents were smokers and she was a smoker and we'd always go to the smoking section. Yeah, they, and now, like, they, they don't really have a smoking section anymore. Yeah, there's no more so I guess I didn't section. notice that because I did notice that a lot more of the English, they seemed like they smoked more. There was a lot more vaping at least. I'm not I've sure noticed. on the British. I know, like, I think France is big on smoking. That's true. And but like yeah, I guess it didn't occur to me that the pubs, nobody was smoking in, indoors anywhere. Yeah, the, I didn't notice it either, but it makes sense because, yeah, you smoke a whole pub. Because I didn't notice signs saying no smoking because we still have signs on a lot of buildings saying no smoking. I'm fine. I, I, you know, it's a, I prefer it. A business has the right to decide they, what they allow. So. Yeah. A short drive south from Keswick takes us through the very countryside that inspired England's great romantic poets. Wow. The greatest of those was William Wordsworth, who lived here in Dove Cottage. Wordsworth spent his most productive years, 1799 to 1808, in this humble stone house. This is where he married, had kids, and wrote much of his best poetry. In these cramped and simple oh. quarters, Wordsworth practiced his philosophy of plain living and high thinking. The adjacent museum displays original writings, sketches, and personal items that oh, give another cool. peek into the life and world of the poet. I mean, I've never heard of this his guy, but well stamped cool. passport you never and heard his well worn little I'll suitcase so. are proof. I can't think of. Life. I will. I'm not gonna. Like, I can't name off some of my head one of his poems, but I have heard of him. Okay. And I'm pretty sure I've read a couple of his poems. You've heard in that school. he was a poem. Like you, a poet. you hear the name and you know he's a poet. Yes. His well stamped passport and his well worn little suitcase are proof. He packed light and traveled far and wide. Suitcase. Oh my gosh. Notebook in hand, he no wandered wheels. across England and through Europe on what would become the romantic grand tour. Until then, oh almost nobody climbed a mountain just because it was there. But Wordsworth did. He'd wander lonely as a cloud through the countryside, finding inspiration lost in the awe-inspiring immensity of nature. Of the valley, how it's If appreciating escapes. nature became a religion in 19th century England, Wordsworth was its prophet. Yeah, this is, I mean, I'm sure no matter what, you know, there's been people throughout time to appreciate nature or whatever. Oh, yeah. Like, you just have to, I feel like. With the advent of the Industrial Age, machines were taming nature and factory hours were taming free spirits. The Romantic movement, led by artists and writers like Wordsworth, was a reaction against this. Romanticism celebrated nature, making it almost a religion. Mm. People came here as if on a pilgrimage. And like the poets, after communing with nature, they'd be inspired and reflect on the meaning of life. While Wordsworth would likely be appalled at the speedy convenience of it all, <laughs> drivers can enjoy car touring. From Keswick, the really scenic 20-mile yeah. loop south reveals the essence of Lake District charms. That's cool. Newlands Valley is a majestic oh, place. Oh, that. wow. That's interesting. I know, I know, plots. I know like, uh, I've seen comments like people say it's God's country now. I've also seen that on several different places, <laughs> but still, it's like that is. I don't know. Everywhere is God's country. Yeah, just like imagine just living there. It's like it's very pretty. Now, compared to us, wherever we, this picture was taken, living there, that we could actually yeah. always see it. <laughs> but like for us, we just have like flat grass. That's what we see. Yeah, we got it, a little hill. It can be pretty sometimes, yeah. like certain sunsets and stuff, but it's not. It's not the same. Not that. Newlands Valley is a majestic place. 
If it had a lake, it would be packed with tourists. But it doesn't, and it isn't. <laughs> the valley is dotted with old family-run farms. Cheap. With tough times for small farms, most of the wives supplement the family income by running B&Bs. Many farms in the valley rent rooms. When car touring, make a point to stop and get out. Oh, that's pretty. From the Newlands Pass summit, there's a rewarding little walk to a frisky waterfall. <laughs> a frisky From I was going to say, frisky is an odd word to use for waterfall. Here, the road descends, winding scenically past a farm hamlet and to delightful oh, yeah, Buttermere mm -hmm. with its popular lakeside trail. We know trail. what that is now. Our loop then climbs rugged Honester Pass with its wild and weather-beaten charm. At the summit stands the Honester Slate Mine. England's last still-functioning slate mine offers tours. Oh, cool. You'll put on a hard hat, load onto a bus for a short climb, and then learn about the region's slate industry from an enthusiastic guide. <laughs> what we describe that rock as is green gold. It's called green gold because it represents today the finest roofing slate in the world. It is the number one, the Rolls Royce of slate. On that rock on the far side, as we looked when we were down below, there are bosses, little stone huts where the miners used to live. Because what we have to remember here is pre-First World War, through the history of mining, oh, wow. if you worked here, That's you crazy. lived here. Right, in we go, this way. For I'd rather live on the so outside of the mountain than inside the mine. I don't know. I actually, uh, I, yeah, you think you've seen an Indian cliff dwelling? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are really cool to see. Yeah, those are interesting. The mining. If you That's worked really cool, here, though. you lived here. Right, in we go. This way, folks. Oh, shoot. I just thought you can never uh, call into work and say you, like, you can't make it or something. Because you live there. <laughs> you live there, yeah. Narrow shafts lead deep into the evocative Victorian mine. You'll be thankful for your helmet. <laughs> Standing inside the mountain, surrounded by slate scrap and the beams of a dozen headlamps, you'll learn the backstory of the stone that roofs so much of England. Imagine you're eight, ten years old, working underground, maybe for 10, 14 hours a day, and your job was to assist your father and your elder brothers so in drilling the rock. I think you're gonna get a hang of this one, Barry. Yeah, this is before child labor. Well, he's talking about before child labor laws. Like, right. I mean, like, uh, like Oliver Twist. Oh. Like a lot of it's about like the f the children in the factories, like very young working. Right. I think you're gonna get a hang of this one very quickly, folks, because you can imagine there's someone at this end with a large sledgehammer, and each time you hit it, turn it, twist it, push it, hit, turn it, push it, end back into the rock. I, I don't know about you, but a tour like that Harvard. makes me glad I work and live above ground oh my and in the 21st century. <laughs> Completing our loop, we pass humble hamlets and the lush Burrowdale Valley, always open for serendipity. These valleys have sustained communities here for longer than you might imagine. Just outside of Keswick stands the Castle Rig Stone Circle. Like a mini Stonehenge that's, that's drenched in Lake like. District yeah. Beauty, it was built over 4,000 years ago to function as a celestial calendar. Imagine ancient people filling this clearing in spring to celebrate fertility, in late summer for the harvest, and in winter for the solstice. Mm. Festival dates were dictated by how the sun rose and set in relation to these stones, which were aligned with the surrounding peaks. Mm. For maximum goose pimples, as they say in England, be here after everyone's left and the mystical place is all yours. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder what, uh, I'm sure it still works. Like if you understand astrology and, well, I shouldn't say, I just, I, I don't know all the constellations and what means what, but I, I feel like it has to still work. Leaving the Lake District, we drive east for more highlights of North England. The road parallels my favorite ancient Roman site in all of Britain. Hadrian's Wall was built by the Romans huh. during the reign of Emperor Hadrian oh, nearly 2,000 years ago. Grass growing on top. This is one of England's most thought-provoking sites and much loved by hikers. Oh, this goodness. great stone wall stretched 73 miles from coast to coast across the narrowest part of Northern England. Yeah, yeah. This I, was I, I recently um, listened to like a whole 
break down like Roman history and stuff and yeah they like literally put a whole wall across all of England wow. to separate the north from the south. Interesting. Not a very big wall but it's enough to keep like pe horsemen and people have to I climb guess that's over true. it. I mean it looked like Slow it was them down. five, four, five, six feet so yeah. Maybe depending on where you're at. From coast to coast across the narrowest part of northern England. Hmm. This was more than just a wall. It was a cleverly designed military rampart manned by 20,000 troops. And it was made. At every mile along the wall, a small fort guarded a gate. Oh, that's cool. Every mile? Interesting. Its actual purpose is still debated. The wall, which often takes advantage of natural contours in the land, likely defined the northern edge of the empire and helped defend Roman Britain to the south from pesky, hard-to-conquer barbarians to the north. <laughs> Today's modern border between Scotland and England still runs pretty close to this ancient wall. Huh. A particularly well-preserved segment of the wall leads to Housestead's Roman Fort. Roman forts had a standard design, a rectangular shape containing a commander's headquarters and barracks. There's little more than stone foundations hmm. remaining. These stones raised a floor to give stored grain ventilation. And this was once a set of Spartan barracks. Pondering these desolate ruins, I can imagine the bleakness of being a young Roman soldier stationed here 18 centuries ago. Uh, I wouldn't call that bleak. I mean, that's really pretty countryside. Yeah, but you have to think. You're pro there. There's probably not many women for the men. Well, that's true. <laughs> Um, you're, I mean, apparently, I guess where you're born. It looks very deserted. You, yeah, like, you're there's very, nothing there's around. There's a fort, and you're not near any, anything else. It's like you're near just other forts, so. But at least you have pretty countryside. Driving Ooh, further east, there. we reach the city of Durham. With its famous cathedral, built by the Normans, it adds yet... What is the difference between a minster and a cathedral? Have we figured that out yet? It was, um, the, the host, oh, the bishop, or Oh, it depends on, like, yeah, who's in charge. It, if, they, if they have a, or, I want to say archbishop, bishop. It was if, something like that. If it's, like, his seat, or if that's where he lives, then it becomes a cathedral, like his, not a minster. Right. Another layer to this region's history. As their empire was falling in the 5th century, that's the Romans cool. abandoned Britain to the barbarians. After centuries of relative chaos, a central government was re-established by the Normans who invaded from France in 1066. French. Along with stability and a capable rule, the Normans brought with them the prevailing European style of architecture, Romanesque. Here in England, they named it for the people who brought it, Norman. <laughs> Before visiting the church and learning about Norman architecture, we'll get the lay of the land. I love how it's right next a sharp river. bend in its river protected medieval Durham, providing a moat on three sides. Today, the river seems to protect the city only from the modern world. Hmm. From this riverside path, much enjoyed by residents for a peaceful little getaway, we can ponder the cathedral That's as cool. approaching medieval pilgrims once did. The tangle of streets leading up to the cathedral, while retaining its medieval atmosphere, is lively. The city hosts the country's third oldest university, Mm -hmm. Along with the student vibe, Durham also feels blue-collar because of its historic connection with the mining industry. Mm. For nearly a thousand years, pilgrims have I just loved it, like these massive ministers of cathedral, like, uh, not cathedral, but just these massive, like, just towering over everything. I know, they and they're not even stand like, out. They're not like even a skyscraper, but I don't know, to me it's just not the same, like a skyscraper. It's because it's such a unique shape and architecture of building that it just stands out over everything else. I feel like, yeah, because I feel like skyscrapers for the most part are kind of ugly. <laughs> yes, for sure. For nearly a thousand years, pilgrims have set their sights on this. The Durham Cathedral, standing like a mighty fortress. Built around the year 1100 to house the much venerated bones of the great Dang. missionary monk St. Cuthbert, it offers perhaps England's best and purest look at Norman architecture. I love the black the stone. Mm -hmm. I, the archive. I think that actually comes from smoke towers. The industrial age, I think that's what turned to black. Either that or other fires that have happened around it. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like smoke as well. Yeah. If I remember. The architecture is unusually harmonious because the church was completed in just 40 years and survives essentially unaltered. That's pretty cool. Round oh. arches and zigzag decorations are textbook Norman style. Stroll down the nave to the center. 
gaze up at one of the highest bell towers in Europe. When the Normans conquered the Saxons here in England back in the 11th century, they brought with them more than just their architecture. They brought a whole new order. And this mighty church way up here in the north was more than a place of worship and a home for St. Cuthbert's bones. It was an unambiguous political statement, hmm. both to the conquered Saxons and to the Scots further north. The Normans were here to stay. Interesting. Grand medieval churches and the art that fills them are a reminder that monks like Cuthbert were the intellectual candles who helped keep scholarship flickering through the dark ages. Huh. Later, that knowledge strengthened the church and made wonders like the Durham Cathedral possible. The medieval Durham Cathedral is enlivened with art from our generation huh. and from its community. This window gives us a striking overhead view like of the Last glass. Supper. And this one celebrates the church's 1,000th birthday with a sweep through local history and industry from mining to farming. Hmm. I hope you've enjoyed our trip through northern England. From the pristine Lake District, along Hadrian's awe-inspiring wall, to Durham's magnificent cathedral. We've been inspired by England's fascinating past while enjoying its charming present. <laughs> so yeah, that just makes me want to go experience some of that stuff myself in person. Yeah, I know we missed out a lot of North England because part of me is also like, I know I've been wanting to check out Newcastle because I've heard a lot about Newcastle and don't know much about it. So maybe we can save that for a later video, but leave a comment down below if you know of a good video that we should watch that has to do with Newcastle. But for this particular one, I would say I'd spend most of my time in the Lake District though, because I, I love countryside. I mean, cities are cool and towns are neat and hamlets and all that, but I, you can't get me out of the country enough. <laughs> no, we're not. If we go over there, we're not staying the whole time in Lake District. Now we might spend like maybe three days. I gotta hike at least three mountains. But yeah, I'm uh, loosely hoping I would love to come back for at least two, three weeks. Yeah, explore so, some of the things we missed. It's loosely in the plans. We'll have just have to see where life takes us, but <laughs> hopefully it's a possibility mm -hmm. and come back and see all of you guys again. I would love that. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, let us know you guys thought down below if we should check out some more of these uh, countryside city mm -hmm. nature videos. Some other hidden gems of England that we missed. Yep. Please be safe. Take care and look after one another.